we're at okay. a point where we're live streaming. Yeah. We record things as well. So <coughs> it's for you primarily, but it's also for the World Wide Web and the future. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I started. So Jeremiah Jenkins, um, thank you guys for coming out. Fred knows Jeremiah. Maybe you guys have just met him. Uh, we met Jeremiah, I guess, a couple of years ago. Probably. Three years ago. Three, right? Really? Yeah. Artists in Residency program we, oh, had, yeah. we were offering at the compound. Um, and he came in and kicked butt and made all kinds of amazing work. He showed his work in the artist gallery. And at this point, we stumbled across each other again recently. And <laughs> at the clay store. Yeah, at the clay oh, store. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. And yeah. uh, thought this was a perfect venue for uh, his more recent work that he's been doing. Well, he's always worked on a lot of things but for this yeah. particular project. Um, it's always a pleasant surprise to Jeremiah's work. He, he works in a lot of different media, but it's all cohesive thematically, uh, what he's saying. Um, but I'm not going to talk for him. I'll let him talk. <laughs> I won't interview you. Just go ahead and talk. If you guys have questions, um, yeah. feel free to raise your hand and you can answer them. But tell us what you're up to and what's going on with these bird models. But you know, it's like that whole thing about working in different works, but seeing that there's a line is something I'm always very insecure about, because <laughs> it's, because I think, and I, th what I think about it, my work is that I'm, I'm sort of like this, um, I'm like an anthropologist that makes commentary, where I'm observing us and the things that we do and trying to figure out why we do it, and then sort of throw in my, you know, opinion <laughs> here and there, um, and this work. This body of work actually came out of just something that would happen to me when I'm like out walking around and I would hear a plane and I look up and I see a bird and I have this disconnect in my head for a second where it's, I have to tell myself that no, that the plane is somewhere else, the bird's not, not making that noise, but they occupy the same space in me somehow. And I, and I started to kind of try to figure out what that was about and a lot of times with my work, that's where it'll start. And then I start to look into it, and as I look into it, I find all of these crisscross connections that uh, sort of help the work, like, you know, extrapolate from there. Um, and I, I thought what I would talk about today is not just about the idea for these particular pieces, but the sort of process um, which, that I have to go through to make it, um, which actually involves a lot of internet shopping. Um, for, for a very specific reason, um, because I'm, I'm looking for specific things and, you know, I used to go to like yard sales or um, flea markets and, and scour for particular things, but when you're looking for something very specific, that's what the internet's great for because there's all people, all different kinds of people selling things for different reasons. And, um, and I thought that that w is kind of an interesting side that most people wouldn't, would never see. So I thought I'd talk about that a little bit. Um, so first, let me talk about um, an experience I had when I was maybe uh, 11 or 12. My grandfather picked me up from school. Didn't really, he didn't, never really said much, but he said really nothing about where we were going. We pulled up to a random house just on a normal street. We go in, it's a buddy of his, he takes us into this back room, and the, the whole house is just normal house, normal house, normal house. We go into the back room, and it's like Africa. It's animals, this guy was a hunter, and he had hunted animals from like all over the world. And the room was absolutely filled with taxidermy. And I, I grew up in a very, very small town, in a very small place, like in a valley, that's very hard to get out of. And to be, you know, I know that they were, they were taxidermied and they weren't alive, but to have that moment of like, like transportation, to be like transported there and to be that close to th things in real life, or at least that's the way it felt, was something that stuck with me for a very long time. Um, so when I started to make this work, like that's, I found myself in that same situation where uh, like the first one that I made um, was actually a, a bird that I found. And uh, I had a little uh, model airplane. And when I put the wings on, I had this, that same like, feeling of 
being transported into a reality where you know planes and birds were one and flight was just this thing that both of these objects occupied um, so then I riffed on it <laughs> for the whole body of work <laughs> um, and and it's amazing when you know you see a bird and it's a, a different type of bird has a different personality you know watching a hawk is very different than watching you know a robin and the same goes with planes you know looking at a Cessna is very different than looking at like an F-16 you know and I think that there's something to, within human technology that evolves in the same way that animals have evolved um, like this diversity of species is something that we sort of do I think semi-intentionally but I think that it happens in a much more uh, profound way than maybe designers realize um, so that's, that's sort of the, the basis for this work. Um, uh, and then I started looking for parts, <laughs> okay? Uh, and it was sort of this like back and forth between looking for a plane or looking for um, the, the wings to fit. Um, I had to work a lot with scale. So I had to figure out um, what plane would work at what scale and find wings that would not only match the plane but fit the personality of the plane. Um, like I didn't want to put duck wings on uh, a little prop plane because I don't, that's not the same kind of thing that a duck does. Ducks migrate, ducks move over large distances, they're sort of big flyers, you know, they soar, they, you know, do all these very dramatic landings and that reminded me a lot more of like airliners. So I've got a 747 and a 727, um, the little prop planes were much more like finches and canaries and sort of small songbirds. Um, so that's, that's the direction I went with those. Um, there's the one, one quail that's a search and rescue plane. Because um, if, if you've ever watched quail, they're always in the shrub, you know? So they always would have to like look for each other in this kind of the same way. It's like this, I, I don't even know if I can really put it into words. It's like this low sort of existence where you're like looking up, down and around and you're not really thinking about the sky even though you can get there you know you're you're in the sky with your mind on the ground um, so I, I guess let's so I'm going to show you my Etsy page or, or my, my Etsy uh, account and my eBay account and talk a little bit about um, some of these sources because I think what um, the direction I took it to make these taxidermy uh, pieces kind of, uh, in my mind, points to a lot of like uh, scientific practices and uh, also commercial practices from like the late 19th century, early, early 20th century, where scientists would go out with a net and they would say, oh, a new species, and they'd, you know, throw a net over it, bonk it on the head and throw it in a jar and throw it in a box and document it, right? It was very common for them to, to kill a lot of birds uh, because they wanted to uh, capture it and catalog it and, and, and hold it. Uh, and then in the early 20th century, using feathers and hat making became a, kind of a, a big deal. And there were some species that were nearly drove to extinction just for vanity. Um, and I think that that same that same move is something that we do in, you know, our, our more like mechanical sides of existence. You know, the way that we build things, the way that we sell things. Um, I think that there's a mechanism in there that is something that is sort of irrevocably human, <laughs> that for good, for better or worse. Um, and I, I I sort of stumbled on that um, in this process. Um, so. I don't know if you need to switch it over to the... So, uh, let me start a little earlier. This is another, another plane that's, that's in the other room. Um, 
So, <laughs> you know, these are from, from like a parakeet. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming it doesn't say that, but this is someone from. stuff like that. Um, they're not necessarily meant for uh, taxidermy because there's not the rest of the body and, and most people that are doing taxidermy don't work that way. Um, but here's another one uh, right here is a, a pair of blue Swedish duck wings and a pair of two mummified blue Swedish duck feet being sold separately um, from the same. For. But what was interesting too, especially with the duck wings, was when I got them, um, you know, I knew that I wanted duck wings and I knew I wanted the ducks to be an airliner, um, but the ducks, the duck wings have a shape to them. And instead of, instead of having a dead bird and posing it and drying it in that shape, I had to sort of work with the shape that it happened in, uh, which I kind of really, I liked because then, it, then I sort of could just find like what was the position that a duck would have its wings in that same, same uh, position? What would it be doing? Um, you know, which is like taking off and, and landing. They, they, they can like tuck their wings in when they're going in at the final moment, you know, and uh, it could even be seen as like a flap, like caught, caught in time. Um, sparrow wings. Uh, So the sparrow legs come in pairs of three. Uh, and you can see from the picture that they've got a, a pretty um, large amount of, of sparrow wings. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and it's funny because <laughs> and a lot of times with my sizing, like this is what, what I get. So I knew, I knew it was about this scale. So I, I, I knew, you know, about the size that I was going to need for a plane, um, there was only one that tricked me. There was only one when I got it, I realized. It anything that you want and yeah I mean and, and it's just it, it's in this it's this new kind of like interacting on like a commercial level that you know I, I don't think that we're completely used to and I'm I, I think it'll be really interesting in the next like 10 15 years to see where it goes I mean there's already been things like the dark net where you can buy anything that's you know doesn't even have to be legal or moral um, but you can buy it and even, you know, Etsy, Etsy is, you know, arts and crafts, but here people are using this and presenting it as an, as like a craft and, or at least a part for arts and crafts. Um, yeah, there's my still. Um, so yeah, here again, this is from the same guy in Australia. what happened there we go I don't know these people but when I look at her website and I see that like over here on the side she's got 
lots of quail wings, and she also sells quail eggs, <laughs> you know, I, then I can, I can, And I, and I got them from the same, same person who's probably a farmer. Uh, the crow wings that are on the, the shuttle. And again, the crow feet comes in, they come in pairs of two pairs. Um, a few feathers thrown in. It's interesting because if you tried to do this without the internet, you would have to be out in the hills. I'd have to be, yeah, I'd have to be like doing actual taxidermy, yeah. So I had the, I had the idea. And then I was, I was in this stage of where am I going to get these things? Like, how am I going to do this? And then I found a, a bird that had died. And I've never killed anything in my life. I grew up around hunting, you know, grew up in that whole world, but like, I've never crossed that line until that moment. And then I, so I had this bird and I was like, and I love, I love birds, I love animals. I, when I, I have this like moments of like, magic when I like look at them and I, you know, I make eye contact with sparrows and stuff like that, you know? And then I find myself in this position where I'm like, well, this bird is, doesn't care. I don't think, you know? And I, I took it home and I salted it, dried it out in salt, um, like, which is very basic, very minimal uh, uh, curing method. Um, and then I put it together and, and it wasn't as, I didn't feel like my sh soul was shattered in any kind of way, you know? And I think the reality is that like, you know, I, I eat chicken wings, yeah. you know, and I, I eat hamburger and all that. And it's, there's this disconnect, which is maybe an, a, a completely different talk or another, another project between like the, you know, things that we consume and the way that they get there, you know, and we have a lot of yeah. folks that see the exhibit, most everybody loves it, but occasionally gets one that's like, ooh, yeah. a little disgruntled by it. So, yeah. Um, well, people were saying the word disturbing yeah. the, on the opening and, and you know, I'm sure you can eat chicken and cows all day long and try to set the top. Yeah, it's, it's, a weird, it's a weird thing that we have in us too. And, and I think taxidermy is a, is a weird uh, way of denying it where it's we take a dead thing and make it look alive, you know? And I think that as we, like I was thinking of, of this today, like what we do, like we observe, consume, and produce. Like we observe a thing, we consume it in some way, and we produce something out of it. So with animals, we observe animals. We see that they, you know, like chickens, lay eggs. So we consume those eggs and we produce an omelet, you know? we. Even, even just the idea of flight, like we observe flight, we consume the information from that observation, the shape of the bird wings, the, the lightness of the birds, and then we produce planes, you know? And, and I think that that's like one of the main, main mechanisms for human development, and it's just our existence in the world. You know, from the beginning of painting on cave walls, we were trying to figure out what was going on around us and then how we could make stuff come out of that. How are we gonna, when are the bison gonna be back? You know, let's, let's mark it now. <laughs> bison are here now. Oh, next, oh, they're here, they're back. You know, and then we consume and then we produce. We produce a, entire cultures out of that, you know, f beyond, beyond just the immediate production. Um, and I think like these, these parts too, like this one was, was funny because this, this mallard, I'm just looking for mallard duck feet to match the mallard wings that I have. And this, this came in a box with a little card saying,
they're young, and most times their young grow a lot faster. So they sort of take away the resources from that bird's young, and then all of a sudden these and it's like a robin has a starling chick, and it's like, what, you know? Um, so when I'm like looking for all these, these bird parts and I came across these starlings, I wanted to find a plane that matched that. So I put them on the SR-71 Blackbird. Um, and, you know, the SR-71 Blackbird was like developed during that time of, you know, the high spy time when everybody's watching everyone, no one wants to be caught doing it. Um, it was pretty. It was pretty like low low point as far as like global <laughs> cooperation goes, right? Um, and I felt like it matched the personality of the starling. Um, and then there's that like I don't know cosmic coincidence of you know it's called a blackbird, and the starling is called a blackbird, and then they they act similar. They're they're undercover agents, you know, in, in the same kind of way and. Um, that also, I also did that for the shuttle, um, which is sort of my, my tribute to Vikings, um, because I, I really sort of got into Norse gods, like, while I was making this body of work, and, uh, sort of called on Odin accidentally. Um, <laughs> but I was thinking, like, that, that idea of the unknown and the unexpected, and, um, you know, when Vikings first, like, ventured out, like, they didn't know anything. You know, they didn't know there was anything out there, um, but they, they pushed out. And, you know, I think that it takes a certain kind of, like, cleverness and ingenuity to do that and, and a certain kind of uh, uh, chutzpah to do that as well because it's, you know, and uh, it's scary. And I feel like that's what we do with, you know, our push into space. And I feel like crows also have that quality. Like, they're very brave. They're very smart. Um, it's the only thing they've got going for them, really. Like they'll, you know, team up on hawks and eagles, and you know they they figure out all these different things, and they're not they're not equipped for anything, really. You know, they're they're sort of this like multi-use bird where they've got talons that they could use to rip and beaks that they can use as tools. Um, so I think that's that you know that's another one where there's this this intersection of of like the personality of the bird and you know, the plane that I used and, you know, why it was there in the first place. Um, so, yeah, that, that was one thing I tried to think about. Um, so, also, the, the, the planes were also something that were... When I work on a project like this, I find myself in these worlds, like the world of taxidermy bird parts and the world of model airplanes. And, um, you know, I, I kind of go into it a little blind or with a very basic idea and end up learning all this stuff, um, learning about different kinds of planes and uh, learning about, you know, uh, to the scales, like the, just the different scales of model airplanes. Like, they're not on all, all on the same scale, of course, um, and I had to do it that way because the birds, you know, the birds, it wouldn't have fit otherwise. Um, so yeah. Did you have planes off at all before you started this work? Um, I think I started this work because I was, I'm, I'm really I into it. Um, like I'm into planes. Um, I also bought it. this place that was by an airport and we had like one of those late nights and the whole crew just kind of stayed stayed there like you know hanging out until sunrise and there was a plane that was taking off and you know I was just like looking at it I'm just like staring and I'm watching it the whole time and I still still do this when I see a plane flying I just watch it the whole time 
And uh, one of my friends like kind of made fun of me. He's like, oh, you're looking at it like, you know, Casablanca, like, oh, we'll be on that plane one day. And, <laughs> and I think that's kind of like what it was like for me. I was like, I, I didn't fly on a plane until I was like 24, you know, and this idea of, of doing that just, you know, I, st I still, you know, I've, I've taken several plane trips now, but like I still, when I get on a plane, and we do that takeoff, right? And it's like, oh, I'm like, oh my god, like I can't believe this is actually happening, <laughs> you know? Are you a window seat guy? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Like, just the whole time, you can see everything. You can see the patterns in the land, like the quilt work of farms, and you know, and just having a perspective like that is something that I really value as an individual, and I think for the greater us like the for society and humanity I think that was also a big deal um, you know the one the spirit of st. Louis that that plane represents like one of the first big moves like once we did that it's like forget just going off of a sand dune or forget just going across a, you know some land like we've we've bridged the world together you know and, and then we've just kept doing that and now it's we don't even think about it now I think like, oh, well, just how am I going to afford a ticket to fly to Tibet? Like, you could do that, <laughs> you know what I mean? It takes so long. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then the next step is, who knows what? 90 years. What's that? 90 years. 90 years yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's so fast. Yeah, that's pretty much what Moses said. It hasn't been 100 years. It's crazy. And now look at what we're doing. We don't, even, we don't even think twice about it. My daughter was on a plane when she was... One years old, or her first plane trip, yeah. you know, and it's, you know, it, and and the shuttle is was the la it was the last one I did, and I felt like I was sort of building up to it, because <laughs> it's it's the next, you know, the next step, and I, you know, maybe we'll find ourselves in a position one day when we that's our only place left to go, you know, maybe maybe we'll figure out a way to make it so that. We can go to space regularly and, you know, like leave our planet. Like, you know, first, I, I, I think a lot of our original gods were in the sky because that was the only place we couldn't get to, you know. And a, a lot of those early, like, Egyptian gods were in the sky and were flying because, and like, I, yeah, that, that was the thing that we could never, ever reach. You know, you can reach everything else. You can climb whatever mountain, no matter how hard it is, you can climb it. But you, you need something else to get up there. And I think, that, I think that's still something that definitely fascinates me. And I think that it, it pulls us as a, as a species, right? Forget even society. Society is all over the place. But as a species, I feel like we're still drawn to that. Like we're still drawn to that place that we can't reach. You know? <laughs> Sometimes, I think I did more cars. more cars. Yeah, but I was always into um, the the like balsa flyers. I was always into that actual flying. You know, we lived on a hill, and I would and I would just throw them off the hill all the time, or you know, climb up on the house. Did you have to do a lot of experimenting to get the organic pieces to join to the inorganic pieces, like the the, the wings and the feet? How did you attach? Yeah, them? I mean. How did you attach them to the plants of mass? Uh, just, I mean, a lot of that was actually, it was more, a lot of my work is, is very, um, there's like one way it can fit together. And I feel like with these two, it's just about placing it, placing it just right and then figuring out how to make it look as seamless as I can. Um, which, you know, if you really look at taxidermy, you can see the, you can see the stitches, <laughs> you know? And, and I kind of like that aspect that it's like, it looks it looks real, but it's also, you know, it's, there's something about it, and I think that that like uncertainty that you have is something that I always try to get intentionally. Um, so I yeah, I mean, I just sort of played around, and and um, the, the the coolest part for me was once I got the plane together, once I got the the wings on there and the feet on there, was then positioning it on the the scene, you know. 
integral to the whole the whole piece. Yeah, they, they, they all they all relate. Yeah. Fit, right? <coughs> the little the little creature that we've created to sing to fit into the scene. So how do you and the tech and the effort you put into the scene seems to be just as much as you put into the to the, the figure itself. We sometimes it's, sometimes it's a little bit more actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, I think thinking about what this plane represents and what the bird represents and, and where would it be and what would it be doing and why and, and you know, what, what point do I want to capture it? You know, so the, the blackbird is with a nest, you know, and it's out on a branch. Um, the, the ducks are, uh, you know, one is it's got cattails, right? And it's, it's uh, descending. So it's coming in for a landing, and and I really wanted to like e exaggerate that, so I just kind of put it all the way to the side. Um, this shuttle actually that I did very minimal um, uh, on the bottom there because I wanted to sort of preserve the nothingness, like because this is a, a bird that flies in nothing, <laughs> you know, and I, I wanted to kind of maintain that you know a little bit. Um, this one was sort of my, I was sort of thinking of like, um, like colonialism, and uh, this is a French war plane, um, and then the idea of like a tropical bird, uh, and sort of, sort of, you know, jutting around in the jungle or like a riverbank, um, which I, I was imagining that this is a riverbank. I don't know if anybody else reads that. Um, <laughs> yeah. But like the Spirit of St. Louis is, is landing on a beach. You know, um, so yeah, I, I, I definitely paid attention to where it was, you know, and the, the position, I wanted the position to be a way that if there was a plane that size compared to the plants and stuff, it, it could be in the same position that the bird was. I wanted that, I didn't want it to be, I didn't want the plane to be sitting in a nest, you know, I wanted it to be sort of able to occupy both spaces simultaneously. The natural, the natural History um, Museum, at the Open Museum of California Art. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been there with your daughter? Not with my daughter yet. Not yet. They have many dioramas, small dioramas of with stuffed birds mm -hmm. in their environment. Mm -hmm. You know, beautifully done. The whole thing, like if it's a red-winged blackbird sitting on a, on a on a marsh plant with fake water underneath them. It's you know, beautifully done. Mm -hmm. And when I first saw the Oh my God! This is a riff on what they do in natural history museums. Absolutely. Because they did such a nice job of detailing them. Well, I, I looked a lot at, at stuff like that, and, and they made me yeah. think of, of, you know, oh my God, this is an odd natural history museum because mm -hmm. these creatures aren't which they're normal creatures, but but they look like they belong, and you could put one of those in that in yeah. that museum, and people would. Well, I would I would argue that it's, that it is all nature, <laughs> you know, and like even even the plane is just a, a part of nature. But thanks, I mean I like I looked at that I looked at that stuff and that that way of presenting the scene, yeah, which goes back to that idea of like transporting. Like I wanted to I wanted to really be transported into this reality, you know, and and. That's, a, that's, a, that's my yeah yeah that's my that's my favorite feeling of art
that's, that's always just, that's, that like, what I just said could be my artist status. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I, you know, I, I like art and I like art history, but my biggest influence has always been like comedians, you know, and, and what they do, because I feel like they offer something that's very important. And I just, I try to do visual comedy in a way. And, and I also like jokes that aren't necessarily funny. <laughs> jokes that like, just, they give you that, that twist, but it doesn't necessarily, you don't laugh out loud. And yeah, that's, that, I mean, that's why, that's why I do it. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's great. I mean, what you do is Thanks. fairly thought, thoughtful and thought-provoking. And, you know, as I said, this is into a different century, which is wonderful. And mission, <laughs> mission accomplished, right? Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's cool to hear about how much thought goes into each of these actual groups. I mean, I can see, I've been living with them for quite a while now, they're here. They work really well together, but they work really well together Mm-hmm. Well, you know, matches species to bird types. Or yeah. Because plane <laughs> types have particular purposes as well mm-hmm. for particular flight patterns, just like birds have evolved for particular flight ways of uh, ecological niches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You'll never see a canary at 30,000 yeah. feet. You'll never see a prop plane at 30,000 feet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, that's the, the kicker about doing like conceptual found object work is that I always go f- for it to look seamless yeah. and I always want it to look like it just fell into place but then you don't see the work you know like if this was all carved out of wood yeah. you'd be like oh my god yeah. but you know I spent a lot of time like finding the things and, and assembling and you know thanks Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks.